Hello and welcome back to Woodworking Monetize, where woodworking doesn't have to be another expensive hobby. This is a tips video. Here are five tips if you are going to run a craft booth or in a craft fair. So back in December, it was December 3rd or 4th, uh, there's the Santa Mouse Bazaar. It's held by the high school in my town. Um, it's actually run by the basic skills class, so it's a special ed class, and all the money that you pay for a booth which was $25 for the whole day from about 8.30 to 3.30 or 4. Uh, it was $25 per booth. There's about 100 booths uh, for that day. And so they bring in over $2,000. And so it's a good cause and it's not a whole lot of money as far as on the booth side or a seller side is concerned. So I had plans on doing this years and years past. Obviously COVID put a hamper on that. They ran it this year and it was kind of a a quick thing for me about two days before so I had to get some stuff from my basement of uh, items that I have made in the past and then also at that store that I talked about which is now closed um, so I kind of just threw a bunch of stuff together haphazardly and I learned a little bit so these are my five tips before running your first fair if you're a seasoned veteran uh, at these booths on these craft fairs then this might not be for you but this is again something that I learned after just my first um, attempt at one of these. So tip number one is to stage your items. I had one similar to this and I'll show it uh, also in a picture, uh, but it, they weren't my items and the gal came around to the side and she wanted to buy it with those items in it and it was my sister-in-law's and she wasn't giving those to me and I was going to give them back. But the gal who wanted it came to my side and she wanted to buy it with the items. So I've since staged one uh, like this or my wife helped me out like that. So. If I'm gonna sell the box for $15, what I found that people uh, are spending money there, they want to just buy the whole thing and then give it to somebody else for a gift for Christmas. They don't wanna buy a box and then have to go to the dollar store or go to another store and then put things in it. They wanna buy it all in one fell swoop. So if I'm selling the box for $15, I wanna stage it, but I also wanna level up and I wanna be willing to sell the stage. So if it costs me $10 to put all these items in here, I've got some uh, filler uh, uh, marbles in here, uh, I mean, call it chips, whatever you call them. Um, if the stage items cost me $10 and I'm selling this normally for $15, then why not sell this whole thing for $25 or $30? So again, not only do you want to stage your items, but you want to sell the stage. So two is to bring a variety of items in and a variety of price point. So I found that people were willing to spend in other booths as well, $25 to $30, and really nice price point versus $40 to $50 is a little bit steep for, for people uh, to come there on a whim and spend. So you wanna bring a variety of items at price points, but then also a variety of designs of those particular items. So I had one or two uh, tea trays that I have, which is episode three in this uh, on this channel and she wanted a plain one for a charcuterie board and she asked if I could if she could use the stained one and I said well it is stain it's not food grade so I, I can get you a plain one I can make one she took a business card uh, which was great but she never contacted me back so uh, it'd be great to not only have a variety of items at different price points that, the, that people will spend and then also a variety of designs of those specific items that you have. Tip number three is to bring a business card. Make something sort of simple. I did this on Vista Prints. So mine is Redemptive Wood and then I've got a Facebook page, etc., on there where people can find more information about me. So I have that, but I found that I gave one of these out to that gal who wanted the charcuterie board and that's up to her to contact me. So I think a level up from bringing a business card would be to have a clipboard. So next time I'm gonna have a clipboard and if I can get their name and a number or a name and an email even, that guarantees one more contact with that person. If I give them a card, I leave it up to them to contact me. If on the flip side, I get their name and number or name and email, that's a guaranteed one more contact I have with them to reach out. So. Again, bring a business card at the very least, but even a level up to that on tip number three is to bring a clipboard and try to get some contact information from them. Tip number four is to bring photos of your items. I had a table that I made a long time ago and I put a new top on it and I tried to sell that, but it took up a lot of space. So if I brought uh, pictures of my staged items 
say episode two is my potting bench. If I brought a picture of that potting bench, I guarantee I could get 50% down from somebody, tell them I could build it in two weeks or three weeks or however far out. But if I can get some money up front and then build that out, but if I just tell them I can make a potting bench versus showing them a picture. So I'm going to bring at my next craft fair some photos of my items because it's really hard for me to build a potting bench and just leave it in my shop. It's just a little bit of a hassle. So if I can bring photos of my items, especially those larger ones, the potting bench, the uh, actual bench that I made in episode 14 or my blanket ladder. If I have pictures of those, I'd be willing to take 50% down and I can tell them how far out I can build it. And that is tip four, bring photos of your items. And tip number five seems very simple, but it is a tablecloth. I put my uh, uh, booth together the night before and it was great. Next morning, my sister-in-law brought a tablecloth and actually the neighboring booth gave me another tablecloth and so I had a vision of what it looked like without a tablecloth and then I had two different tablecloths, one on the top and then one on the bench below and it made all my items, which are kind of the neutral colors, sort of pop versus having it sitting on a cafeteria table as well. So those are my five tips. Number one is to stage your items and level up and even sell that stage. Number two is to bring a variety of items at different price points and a variety of items or designs from those items. Tip number three is to bring a business card or better yet, bring a clipboard and try to get some information from them so then you can reach out to them next time. Tip number four is to bring photos of your items, especially those bigger items like a potting bench or a bench or a blanket ladder. And take 50% down and to essentially make that sale right then and there. And then tip number five is to bring a tablecloth to set up your booth uh, on the table which really makes your items pop. Those are my five tips. Let me know if uh, I missed something or if there's something else, another tip. I'd love to do another uh, tips from some sort of booth or craft fair that you've done. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also remember to subscribe, that'd be great, and hit that notification bell so you know when another video is out. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks, take care.